Have you ever wondered if you're going to heaven? A question as profound as it is personal, it's one that we've all likely pondered at some point on our spiritual journey. The concept of heaven, the ultimate destination of the soul, holds a significant place in our spiritual life. It's a topic that's not only fascinating, but also deeply intertwined with our faith, our hopes, and our understanding of life's purpose. In this space of exploration and enlightenment, we aim to delve into the scriptures to seek out a clear, scriptural answer to this question. Our objective isn't to speculate or conjecture, but to illuminate, based on the teachings of Christianity, the criteria for entering heaven. So, as we embark on this spiritual journey, let's keep our minds open and our hearts receptive. Let's seek truth, clarity and understanding. Join us as we embark on this spiritual journey to find answers. Heaven, in Christianity, is often misunderstood. It's not about fluffy clouds, golden streets, or endless harp music. It's a place of perfect communion with God, where love, joy, and peace reign supreme. It's the ultimate destination in our spiritual journey, where we hope to experience the fullness of God's presence. Now, let's delve into the criteria for entering heaven according to biblical teachings. The New Testament, particularly in the teachings of Jesus and the writings of Paul, emphasizes faith in Christ as the key to heaven. It's not about our good deeds outweighing the bad on some divine scale, but about accepting the grace offered through Jesus' sacrifice. That's not to undermine the importance of living a righteous life, but to highlight that salvation is a gift, not a reward. A common misconception is that heaven is exclusive, reserved for a select few. However, the Bible paints a different picture. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says, In my Father's house are many rooms, I am going there to prepare a place for you. The many rooms signify the inclusivity of heaven. It's open to all who accept God's grace and strive to live in accordance with his teachings. Another misconception is that we can earn our way to heaven. While good deeds are a natural response to God's love, they aren't a currency to purchase a ticket to heaven. Ephesians reminds us, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Lastly, some believe that heaven is a distant future reality, but according to Jesus' teachings, the kingdom of God which heaven represents is both a future hope and a present reality. It's not just about where we're going, but how we're living now. Understanding what heaven really means in Christianity is the first step towards demystifying our path there. It's about faith, grace, inclusivity, and living the kingdom life here and now. This question has a personal resonance for many of us. Let me share with you a story from my own spiritual journey. There was a time when I found myself grappling with this very question. I was a teenager full of questions, and the concept of an eternal afterlife was both fascinating and terrifying. I remember lying awake at night, my mind racing with thoughts and doubts. Am I going to heaven? was a question that echoed in my mind. I was raised in a Christian household, and the teachings of the Bible were always present in my life. But as I grew older, I began to question, to reason, to seek my own understanding. I wanted to know, not just believe. The question of heaven became a driving force for me. It led me to seek answers, to delve deeper into the scriptures, to grapple with spiritual concepts, and ultimately to strengthen my faith and my relationship with God. But why does this question matter? Why should you and I ponder upon the concept of heaven? You see, regardless of whether you're a devout believer or someone still seeking spiritual clarity, the question of heaven is relevant. It's about more than just the destination of our souls after death. It's about how we live our lives here on earth. It's about our actions, our choices, our relationships. It's about finding purpose and meaning in our lives. It's about striving to be better, to love more, to forgive more, to give more of ourselves. It's about seeking to understand God's will for us and aligning our lives with his teachings. And so, the question, am I going to heaven, becomes more than a theological inquiry. It becomes a personal exploration of our own spiritual journey. It becomes a mirror reflecting our innermost selves, our hopes, our fears, our desires. It becomes a compass guiding us towards a life of love, compassion, and spiritual growth. This question then isn't just theological, it's deeply personal. The Bible provides profound insights into who gets to go to heaven. 
It's like a treasure chest filled with wisdom, guiding us on our spiritual journey. One of the key verses often referenced is John chapter 3, verse 16. Here it's written, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This verse highlights the key role of faith in Jesus Christ. It's not about ticking off a checklist of good deeds, but embracing a relationship with Jesus, trusting in his salvation. Then, there's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. This passage underscores that salvation, and therefore entry into heaven, is a gracious gift from God. It's not something we can earn or deserve. It's a divine gift that we receive through faith. And let's not forget Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. This verse reminds us that claiming to know Jesus is not enough. Our actions and lives must reflect his teachings and the will of God. Lastly, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 offers assurance. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This verse encapsulates the promise of eternal life to those who believe in Jesus. When we delve into the context and interpretation of these verses, we see a recurring theme. Faith in Jesus Christ, living according to God's will and accepting His grace are paramount. These verses can guide our understanding and shape our journey. Knowing is one thing, acting on that knowledge is another. It's time to shift from understanding to action. Evaluating our spiritual journey isn't about ticking off a checklist or comparing ourselves to others. It's about personal growth, introspection, and alignment with our faith. Start by reflecting daily. Take a few minutes each day to consider where you are spiritually. Are you growing? Are you stuck? Are you struggling with a particular sin or doubt? Remember, this isn't about judgment, but about understanding where you are right now. Next, align your life with biblical teachings. This isn't just about reading the Bible, but about living it. Practice love, kindness, and forgiveness daily. Seek justice and mercy. Strive to be more Christ-like in your actions and attitudes. Finally, keep the concept of heaven in your thoughts. This isn't about fear, but about aspiration. Let the hope of heaven motivate your daily actions and decisions. Our actions, anchored in understanding and faith, lead us towards our spiritual goals. Let's seek divine guidance and clarity on our journey. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes as we enter into a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are on this spiritual journey, seeking to understand the path to your kingdom. We ask for your divine guidance to illuminate our way. Help us discern your truths from the myriad voices in this world. Grant us the wisdom to understand your teachings and to apply them in our daily lives. Father, we ask for clarity in our quest. Clear away our doubts and fears and replace them with a steadfast faith. Let us feel your presence in every step we take, in every decision we make. In our journey towards heaven, we pray for strength. May our faith be our shield, our hope our compass. Help us to remain steadfast in the face of trials and tribulations. May this prayer guide us and provide us the strength we need. In our journey today, we've unearthed some valuable insights. We've delved into the profound concept of heaven in Christianity, dispelling common misconceptions and fostering a deeper understanding of this celestial realm. We've navigated the poignant narratives of the Bible, revealing the essential criteria for entering heaven. We've also journeyed through personal testimonies, affirming the relevance of this timeless question to every soul, irrespective of their spiritual state. We've drawn wisdom from scriptural support, interpreting key verses that shed light on who gets the ultimate ticket to heaven. In our quest for practical application, we've proposed actionable steps to evaluate and enrich our spiritual journey and daily practices that align with biblical teachings. We've welcomed a vibrant community of seekers and believers, and together, we've composed a prayer seeking divine guidance on this journey. May this understanding illuminate our path and bring us closer to our spiritual destination.